Welcome, everybody. We have a very special guest as speaker tonight. We have uh, Dr. Scott Burns. Scott Burns has been someone I have been trying to get to present to us for, I don't know, I think two years. And finally, it all came to be that um, Scott is with us tonight. So we're excited for Scott's presentation. Uh, I don't know how to start by introducing Scott. He has taught in so many places. His career spans over 50 years. He's taught in New Zealand, Switzerland, Colorado, Washington, Louisiana, and Scott, I probably missed some places, so feel free to interrupt. But he's an expert on quaternary geology, specializing in the Great Missoula Floods. And tonight we're excited to hear him talk about the floods that happened before the floods that we've all been talking about for so long. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Scott Burns. Welcome, Scott. Well, thank you very much, Dale. And can, can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. All right, well, sounds good. And it, it's really exciting to get a chance to talk to uh, your chapter uh, about something that I think that is very, very important. When I rewrote the book, Cataclysms on the Columbia, uh, Everybody focused in on the, the floods between 15 and 18,000 calendar years ago, uh, which we called the Missoula floods. But what we have found is that there are lots of outcrops in the Pacific Northwest of floods that have, la have occurred all the way through the quaternary, the last 2.8 million years. And so this talk is going to be primarily about those floods and the evidence that we have found that the these ice age floods together we call them all ice age floods the old ones i call ancient cataclysmic floods because we don't know where they came from did they come from an ancient glacial lake missoula or they come down the pond array or they come down the okanagan we don't know but we just know that they did occur uh and and so Erica Medley, who was my grad student, who uh, graduated back in 2012, uh, is the one who put this story together. And so we're going to use uh, a lot of her ideas. I got a chance to see her last week. She now works for the Army Corps of Engineers. She's in Denver. She's risen up to be in charge of all the dams in Oregon and Washington uh, related to earthquakes and, uh, and, and study all of those, especially Cascadia. And she has a great career out there. And uh, and I wish you could get a chance to meet her. So with that, let's go, uh, kind of delve into this. Let's see, click on this and there we go. So what am I gonna be talking about? First of all is aims and objectives to talk about these floods, these ice age floods that occurred before that was 15, 18,000 calendar years ago. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of background about the Missoula floods, uh, the criteria that we use for these older floods, some background geology, a little bit about soil development, because we're going to be talking about uh, caliche layers and stage one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then key sites that we're going to be talking about are going to be over the potholes. Coulee. So mostly uh, they're going to be in Washington, Reese Cooley. Yakima Bluffs, oh, I love that site. Othello Canal, wonderful. Rulo uh, outcrop, and then the Dalles, oh, uh, unbelievably great outcrop there. And then some gravel pits in the uh, in the Columbia Basin. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the geographical distribution of uh, these sites that we have got, uh, their elevation, and then timing. And we will actually give them some dates, early Pleistocene, mid Pleistocene, and late Pleistocene uh, as we go through this. Okay, so when we talk about the Ice Age floods, as I said earlier, most of the time we are talking about those ones 15 to 18,000 calendar years ago um, that Brett's uh, dealt with. But then what I'm trying to stress here is that we have had through the last 2.6 million years throughout the Quaternary, other floods uh, coming down from uh, up in Canada and, 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 and seeing uh, evidence of that, okay? Uh, and so the aims and objectives of this whole project were primarily to find new sites for this. Uh, and then in each one of the sites, then determine, you know, what was the development of the Calcrete or the, the Caliche that you have got there. Uh, also look for exotic class because exotic class are very important because it shows 
because most of the rock that we have uh, out in the channel scablands is basalt. And so if we have a granite or a metamorphic rock or something like that in there, it shows that it's been brought in by floods. And so we visited all of the sites that had been found before uh, in the literature. And then we found a whole bunch of new ones uh, from all of these. And then what we did is all of the samples from them, we determined the amount of calcium carbonate in them. And we'll show you the methodology we use called the Chittick apparatus. Uh, and it, there's a... Uh, there's a direct relationship between the percentage of calcium carbonate uh, in the uh, uh, deposit and the age. The more calcium carbonate, the older that it happens to be. And so we'll talk a little bit more about those. And then what I wanted to do is develop a chrono sequence. That is uh, 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 how... Uh, through time, what were all of these different, uh, grouping some of these uh, together. And then also look at these geographic positions. Just to review a little bit about the Missoula floods uh, that, that we have got, uh, uh, Jay Harlan Breath came up with the idea and you've had lots of talks about that. Uh, and, uh, and, and the, uh, remember the, uh, the Ponderay Valley that you had the ice lobe coming down that skinny part of Idaho up there and dammed up the Clark Fork River uh, in Montana. And then that dam uh, creating a lake all the way back to Missoula, we call Glacial Lake Missoula. And then that dam broke and, and all that water went across eastern Washington, uh, carving out the channel scab lands. All the water got back into the Wallula Gap down at, uh, uh, got back into the Columbia River. Uh, and went uh, past uh, Lula Gap, down into the Columbia River, down the uh, Columbia River to Portland, hit the West Hills of Portland, then some of it went out into the ocean, some uh, into the Fallen Valley, and the rest of it into the Willamette Valley, uh, depositing all that great soil, and then it came back out, the dam reformed, uh, and you had... Uh, up to 89 different floods, 40 of them that made it to Wallula Gap, 40 of them that made it down here. That's what we call the traditional Missoula floods. Uh, and then Richard Waite is the guy that came up with the idea of multiple ones that you have got. Brian Atwater took the, um, the number from 40 that Waite came up with all the way up to 89 plus. And we do that by counting the rhythmites that we have got. But again, most of those traditional ones were 15 to 18,000 years ago. We're going to be focusing in on these older deposits that we have got. Uh, and and so, uh, so these ancient floods came down. Some of them, uh, we, we will actually see the deposits in areas that are in coolies, where the waters came through and eroded. So there's very, very little deposition there. The best story is always to go to the depositional area where you can find the sediments that are there, uh, the gravels. Uh, the rhythmites that you have got, I've got a couple great ones of rhythmites with caliches on top. Uh, and so it'll be fun to take a look at all of those as we go down. All right. So evidence for the older floods. And we had a Friends of the Pleistocene trip uh, just this uh, this past summer, uh, uh, focusing in on the first one of the Friends of the Pleistocene ones. We had about 60 people there. Uh, Sky Cooley was the leader of that. I was one of the leaders, too. Uh, and so what we look for are, first of all, calcareous paleosols, that is buried soils, but they also have the caliche in it. In dry environments, uh, what happens is the calcium carbonate deposits, and through time, with the water coming down it will, uh, in, in the soil, it will only go to a certain depth because of the, uh, the hot temperatures, and evaporating all the water, and it, you will have layers of calcium carbonate that are developed. And then you go through stages one, two, three, and four that you have got. So we will focus in on some of those. Uh, and you can see some of those on the right-hand side. Secondly, uh, we, we have some sediments that have reverse polarity. Uh, that is, they're over 600,000 years uh, uh, because the North Pole and the South Pole reverse periodically. And so reverse polarity uh, in the sediments uh, tells us it's at least 600,000 years old. Also, we find uh, Mount St. Helens uh, C tephra in it, and it tells us that those sediments that are below it are more than 46,000 years old. Uh, and then uh, 
Then what we do is we look for rocks that are not basalt because the basalt is all over uh, Eastern Washington. And so we look for the granites, the metamorphic rocks and the quartzites that you have got, because when we see those, then we know that we are looking at old flood deposits um, uh, and, not, and not local ones. And these are from the cataclysmic floods that you have got. So we look for those exotic uh, class. All right, so here is kind of a map uh, of, of Eastern Washington. And, and so here is Wallula Gap where the Columbia River it goes down into Oregon. There's the Columbia River down in here. There's Arlington. So we've got one of the sites down here uh, just outside of Arlington. Uh, but most of these are going to be up here um, in, in the um, in the uh, potholes coulee off to the left-hand side. And then over here, uh, we'll see here. Othello is one of my favorite sites that we've got there. And then we have the Yakima Bluffs which are on the Yakima River that are down in here. Uh, and then we've got Reese, Reese Cooley that is down here, Rulo uh, outcrop. So this is where we find all of these deposits that uh, we'll be uh, showing you in this one. Uh, and then uh, uh, here, uh, you you also should be able to, oh, let's see, oh, oh, I just, Good, that's good. Uh, so here is kind of a map of all the sites that we studied here, most of them in Eastern Washington, where we have got those. Now, the more modern uh, Missoula floods, the 15 to 18,000 years ago, they removed most of these older deposits. And it's only just in rare areas, upper areas uh, of higher elevations that we still find those uh, today. All right, so just the kind of the background on uh, the different formations that we have in the Pacific Northwest, Columbia River basalts, uh, uh, which are the bedrock for most of eastern Washington and then coming up and down the gorge. Um, most of us 15 to uh, 17 million years old. There are a few down to a si about 6 million years old, but most of them in the 15 to 16 million years old. And it's in this area right here. We also have the Palouse uh, formation, um, which is also found up in here, uh, um, uh, in the Palouse country, uh, in the Lus, and Alan Busaka is the guy who actually put together a lot of those I ideas on that. And then the, the glaciers led, advanced, retreated, advanced, retreated, uh, all the way through the Quaternary, 2.5 million years ago, uh, all the way down to 11,700 years ago, when was the, the last uh, glacial period that uh, we had. So that's kind of some of the background. Also have to talk a little bit about soil development, especially in Caliche. Uh, and what we do is we use the, the work of Mike Machette, who actually lives in Washington, um, and, uh, uh, just up uh, north of where you guys are. Uh, and he took the work of Lee Guile on the desert project and went from four stages of development up to six stages that you've got. And, and so in gravelly parent material, you have these uh, particular characteristics here, non-gravelly uh, material here like sands. And, and uh, it is basically percentage of calcium carbonate. As the age goes more, the percentage of calcium carbonate goes 10 to 15, 15 to 20, or to greater than 40, greater than 50%. And that's why we actually took the percentage of calcium carbonate in all of these uh, deposits that we looked at. Uh, and, and so... Uh, what we do is we go to a site and we say, is it stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four uh, calcium carbonates? I wanted to show you uh, where we, uh, the apparatus that we use in our lab called the Chittick apparatus. Uh, and, and that is what we use to determine the percentage of calcium carbonate. Uh, and Alex Dramanis is the guy who developed all of this many years ago, Mike Machette, uh, uh, developed it even more. And, and so what we have got are stages one to all the way through five of calcium carbonate. And you can see the percentage of calcium carbonate. Uh, stage one barely can actually see the calcium carbonate, but it will fizz just a wee bit. Stage two, it's anywhere from three to 12%. Then you get up 12 to 16 and stage two plus, uh, and then uh, three and four, you're up 30, 40 percent. So each one of the sites that we looked at, we determined the, uh, the amount of calcium carbonate. So let's take a look at a few of the, the sites that we have got, starting out with the Potholes Cooley, okay? Uh, and Bruce Bjornstad is the first guy to note this. 
Uh, and But this is up at a pretty high elevation, 388 meters that you have got. And here it is um, uh, a Google Earth. Uh, let's go out to the actual particular site. And here, I, here is the, the site. And we have uh, layer number one, two, three, four. Uh, and then, uh, and, and so at the very, very top, you have got a calcrete, a paleosol in that. And then down in here, you have less calcrete, but you still have, these are flood gravels. They have exotic uh, granites and metamorphic rocks, et cetera. Uh, down at PC4, that is in the slack water material. But you can see, and look at the how these, these rocks are completely weathered through, uh, showing us that we have a lot of age in them. And so at this particular site here, we had er everywhere from stage one and PC4 down here up to stage three calcium carbonate uh, in one and five that we have. And so what we do is we determine that this one is early Pleistocene, one is early middle Pleistocene. So these have got some ages. You can't go. You you can't do like radiocarbon dating in, on any of these. They're uh, they're way older than all of that. So we have to use relative types of things here. So the, that is one of our first sites, and we have look at all of these different floods uh, that we have got here um, that are throughout the core. Uh, um, um, then we go to Reese Cooley as we are moving uh, to the east here across the state, and Bruce Bjornstad again was one of the first guys to note this. And then Jaffe and Spencer in 2000, and Bruce again in his 2006 one. Um, and here is Reese Cooley down here on Highway 730. Here is Wallula uh, that is up here. Uh, and um, and so uh, let's take a look at Reese Cooley. I love this one. This is a road cut. And you've got eight major paleosols, calcrete paleosols, firstly, all gravels of all different types of, of granites and basalts and metamorphic rocks and stuff like that, all of the way through that. So this is a story of many, uh, uh, up to eight different major floods that we had in the past. And then down here, about uh, down in this particular area here, Bruce actually has reverse magnetism. Uh, which it, it gives us a, a good date of uh, over six, 700,000 years. Uh, and then down at the, and, and so um, from the top all the way down, we have stage one, stage two plus, stage one, stage three, calcium carbonate. And these are the percentages of all the calcium carbonate. And these are some of the class, and you can see all the calcium carbonate on the outside of this. So again, another site showing us that we have a whole bunch of stacked, very, very old um, um, Zula floods, or I mean, ancient cataclysmic floods that we have got. Then we go over onto the Yakima River, Yakima Bluffs. And here is the Yakima River that coming right through here. This is the area that most of the photos are going to be. And so you're down on the river and you look up into the bluffs. Now, Vic Baker noted this many years ago. Bjornstad did. Fetch also did here. So it, again, but the story here is a little bit different. Uh, and, and, and it's very exciting to take a look at. Here it is right here. So here is Wallula Gap down here. And so we're just up into... The, uh, the state. Um, and um, so up on the very, very top, you have got a caliche. It is a stage three calcrete, uh, the paleosol right up at the very top. Look at uh, uh, all of these, uh, these rocks here. And they're exotic ones. There's a little piece of granite, another piece of granite here, uh, all cemented together by calcium carbonate that you have got. And then, uh, so um, here is a and then as you go down, you have less and less calcium carbonate. But the thing is, the ages up that we have up here are uh, uh, determined by the, the, the stages of the calcium carbonate. And so here we have got the lower areas down here. And then we have the caliches up on top. But these are all flood sediments that we have got in the lower part. I love this one. This is one of my all-time favorite photos here. All my photos and my my... My slideshows, Erica is out here. Uh, this is hers, and she has me down here. Now, look at the top. You up, up at the top. We have got uh, stage uh, 
three calcium carbonate. And so everything underneath here is at least a couple hundred thousand years old, okay? But then look at these light lines that go all the way across. These are rhythmites. These are different floods uh, that had occurred in this particular area with the very, very old calcium carbonate up on top. Um, Richard Waite at a Burley Game Gulch, he went out there and saw all of the rhythmites there, which were basically sand on the top, uh, 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 silt on the top, sand on the bottom. Uh, and uh, he counted them up. And so what we're looking at here is between 10 and 15 floods in the past with a, a couple hundred thousand year old caliche on top. And so the look, each one of those is an individual um, flood event from the past. And, and so I love this particular story uh, that we have got there. And so working all of this up, we again, we had a stage three calcium carbonate up at the very, very top, then a stage two, a stage three, and then a whole bunch of stage ones down in this particular area here. And these are the percentages of, of the calcium carbonate uh, that we did in that one. So this story here really points to these ancient floods that we've got. And then we go over, uh, these were all ones that have been found before. And then we go over to Othello, Washington. So, so we're worthy, working our way to the east. And this is one, one that Erica uh, discovered on her own. Uh, and, and so here is Highway 26 is coming here. Here is Highway 17. So where 17 and 26 intersect, there's basically a, a, a lot of garbage over here. If you park in this, uh, this uh, dirt lot, go over to the edge and look down in here, Oh, it is incredible. It is about a five to six foot thick caliche layer. It is, it, we're talking 500,000 years of uh, to form something like that. So let's take a look at that area. Here is a picture of Erica. Uh, and, and so this is up at the very top. Look at this very, very thick calcium carbonate. This is OC3, 2, and 1. And then down below here, these are... Flood flood sediments. Uh, when you when we looked at at them, it's a combination of granitic sands and also um, uh, basaltic sands, uh, and showing us that it is coming uh, from uh, uh, the ice age floods. And and so up in the top, you've got a stage three morphology that is up here, and then the slack water deposit. So slack water deposits down here, and then on top of it, you've got something. That is a couple hundred thousand years old. And look at the, so up at the top, 29% uh, calcium carbonate. But then down in here, we're getting up to um, a lot higher that you've got there. So it is a really, really good site. I think it's one of my favorite ones that is up there. Rulo is another uh, outcrop. It is uh, about eight kilometers northwest of Walla Walla up on uh, Sudbury Road. Gaston O first mentioned this in 2011. Now we're up at 300 meters. So we're at a pretty high elevation. And so here is R Rolo uh, in this, this particular area here, okay? And you can see this um, outcrop uh, from up on top. It's in a road cut. And, and so what we have got, we've got our uh, Rolo, uh, um, number one, um, then uh, deposit number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up. And these are all in loose, windblown silt that you have got. Down at the bottom, this is all quartz sand and little mica, a few basalt pebbles that you have got here. Uh, and, and then as you go up, these are all paleosols in loose. And so therefore we're interpreting them as a different flood deposits that we have got. So at this particular site here, we have at least four floods that are older than 200,000 years old based on the percentage of calcium carbonate we have here. Um, but probably all are middle Pleistocene. And so looking at here is R01, which is way down here at the very, very bottom, stage two calcium carbonate. Then we go up into stage three in here, then stage one, and as we go up, we have different stages and look at all the percentages of calcium carbonate that we have got here. But it's showing us 
probably seven, eight different floods. Now, this is in the list section. And so this is some play, something that Alan Busaka, a very famous professor over at Washington State, uh, 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 and Eric, one of his grad students, uh, kind of also talked about, we added that because it shows some of these older ones. And then uh, one of the last ones I wanted to mention is down in the Dallas. So this is in Oregon. So everything I've been showing you is up in Washington. And so we come down the gorge to the Dalles. Here is the Dalles. There's Dallesport over here, all of its sand dunes. And here is I-84. You come down and then you take uh, Highway 30. Uh, that is coming up, or actually it's 197, I think, going up the hill, and there is an outcrop that was here. And Dave Cordero uh, is the guy who found that, and he was another one of my grad students, and he was, I said, we go out there and find some uh, really good examples of Lust stratigraphy. And he found this, but it's it's, it's all old, old ancient floods. And I, I just absolutely love this one here. This is at the Dalles. And so we have OR1 up at the top, then two, three, four, five, four and a half, and five down here. And the percentage of calcium carbonates, like number three right here, uh, it is almost 20%. And then paleosol number one, which is way down here, uh, that is 27%. Uh, and so these are all layers that are here. Now, if we go down off to the left, you can see all the rhythmites of the of the Missoula floods, the 15 to 18,000, uh, because down, down the valley, that is the Columbia River. And so the Missoula floods got up just to the lower part, but these are ancient cataclysmic floods. These are much older floods that we have got in here that are important. And then right here in Q, U, uh, QR4, right here, uh, there is a tuff there. And this is the, uh, so we sent it off to Andre Sarnwaziki down uh, at the U.S. Geological Survey uh, in uh, Menlo Park. And we said, this is a tough, can you identify? And he does all of the uh, statistics on it and it comes out, it's the Dybiki Waylay Tuff of Nevada uh, and that is in there, which is 600,000 years old. And so it gives us a good date right here in the middle. And then down in here, Everything is reverse uh, magnetism, which is, is so we're over 600,000 uh, in the lower part of this. So this is an incredible sequence. And all of these paleosols that are in here showing us floods uh, throughout the quaternary uh, that we have got. Uh, and, and so stages three, stage three plus, and stage a whole bunch of ones up on top, but down in here, stages two and three calcium carbonates that we have got. And then the, to, the last thing I wanted to mention is out right in the, uh, in the Columbia River, we have a couple of major gravel pits. Most of this gravel, uh, it gets into barges, is shipped down to Portland and is used in concrete uh, in the Portland area. And these are all on the Washington side. And it's the Avery pit uh, that we've got over here um, that we found having some of this calcium carbonate in it in the lower part. The gravel guys didn't like it because the calcium carbonate messed up the gravel. Uh, and, uh, and then so the gravel pit also on the St. Petersburg bar, uh, which is up uh, right down here. Uh, that's another one that we have got, uh, there too. Um, but, uh, all contain stage one calcium carbonate in here. So these are much younger, uh, that we have got. So in the, in the quarry, look at all of these different layers and look, look at, here's a calcium carbonate. This is a, these are older to gravel deposits that we have got from earlier floods in here. Uh, and you, you aren't going to get caliches in the, the 15 to 18,000 years old. So very, very, very important uh, ones that we have got here. So here, we what we did is we uh, sampled all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom here. Here's AB3, here's AB, uh, AB4, 5, 6, 7, 8, et cetera. And then all of the values... The Look at the values here, 0.5 to 1.6, low. The, uh, a lot of the other pits that we were in were 17, 18, 20, 30%. So these are all stage one. And so what we're looking at here is really just poor development in the caliches that we have got here. But they also show 
of uh, some previous floods that we had got in the in the past. Uh, and and so uh, the last area I wanted to mention is kind of um, uh, over in this area, south of I-90, which is coming. And then here is Highway 97. There's Yakima Bluffs uh, that are here. Uh, and then here's the Othello Canal. So some of these over in this area, let's take a look at those and a couple of them down in this area here. So uh, so the the uh, the Columbia River Gorge that we have got all the way from Arlington, all the way down to the Dalles. Uh, there are a couple other ones, stage one calcium carbonate depo uh, deposits in there, much younger. So the old story is mostly up in Washington, but we did find a couple here in, in this part of the gorge that we have got here. So kind of to uh, summarize a lot of this, uh, let's try and kind of figure out where these in the Pasco Basin, all of these particular sites uh, go. So we talked about the Yakima Bluffs, okay, earlier. Uh, uh, and, they, uh, and so the Yakima Bluffs, 12 early to middle Pleistocene floods recorded in the Rhythmites. And then you have two middle Pleistocene gravel deposits uh, that we have got. So here, here is the Yakima Bluffs, okay? Uh, and then field roll uh, uh, that we have got. Uh, that one is, let's see, I don't know where that is. Leslie Road. There's Leslie Road right here. We've got one early Pleistocene, one middle to late Pleistocene there. Uh, and then Poplar Heights, which is down here. Uh, one early Pleistocene deposit that we have got there. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, Cold Creek Bar that we have got. Uh, and there's Cold Creek Bar up there. We have at least one early Pleistocene uh, that is here. So we're finding all of these older deposits based on the amount of caliche. The more caliche, the older it is. And then we put it into early Pleistocene, mid Pleistocene, late Pleistocene uh, that we have got. Um, and, and so we also have the elevations of all of these. And, and, and here we're in the Walla Walla Valley, okay? And the elevations were from 117 to 300 meters. Reese Cooley, there. Uh, so here is the Reese Cooley. We have at least one early Pleistocene and seven early to uh, middle Pleistocene. Rolo, here, where is old Rolo? Um, there it is, right there. Uh, four early Pleistocenes. Cumming, Cummins Bridge, which is down here, one middle Pleistocene that we got. Winans. Uh, uh, which is out here we have uh, uh, a whole bunch of uh, kind of mid -ple Pleistocene that, that are there so we're finding all of these sites and so when you go traveling in eastern Washington through the road cuts and you see some of these white layers in there uh, thick ones uh, think Caliche and think older Pleistocene uh, deposits and uh, flood deposits that these actually went through uh, that, that we had these ancient cataclysmic floods all the way through the quaternary. Uh, back to Othello Channel. Remember, we talked about that. I love the really, really thick stuff there. The interpretation is stage three and stage five um, calcium carbonate. What do we? What's the date on that? We give it early Pleistocene. And then the canal outcrop, which is right in here, stage three calcrete. And again, we give it uh, um, Pleistocene. Oh, Placitocene. Whoops, uh, misspelling there. Sorry about that. Uh, and so, again, lots of older ones. And then when we go over into the Potholes Cooley, Frenchman Cooley, Silicon Road, we have some early Pleistocene and early to middle Pleistocene, middle Pleistocene, middle Pleistocene that we have got. So we went into all of these sites describe them, got the percent calcium carbonate, and then going backwards, then give them dates, early Pleistocene, middle uh, to early Ply uh, Pleistocene dates that you have got. In the chain loose area, which is over here in this area here, look at all of these. We have early Pleistocene, one middle Pleistocene, one early uh, Pleistocene uh, down near Revere. We have Early Pleistocene and two middle Pleistocene, Callaway Road, one middle Pleistocene. So lots of dates that we have put on a lot of these that we have got. 
Uh, and so when we put all of these together, we have early Pleistocene. Look at all of the early Pleistocene. Uh, and so early Pleistocene, what we're doing is, you know, uh, one to two million years ago. Middle Pleistocene, probably 50 to um, uh, 500,000 to uh, a million years old. And then late Pleistocene, this is uh, in the last 50,000 uh, years that we have got. Uh, so, um, so that, so if we put all of these on a time graph here, the, uh, first of all, this here, this is elevations. Okay. And then this is from East to West here. And, and so you have the early Pleistocene ones here, the middle Pleistocene's here, and then the, uh, uh, middle and then the, uh, early to middle Pleistocene that you've got. The thing is, you find them uh, uh, all at different elevations and, and and you're getting some early Pleistocene ones at lower elevations and you're getting some of these middle uh, uh, to early ones at the higher elevations. So there is no correlation between the elevations and the ages of all of these. So what did we put together as the conclusions? You know, when we talk about the Missoula floods, we, those are the Ice Age floods between 15 and 18 thousand years ago they eroded away many of the earlier deposits from the earlier floods but in some places especially some of the higher elevation ones we are getting some of these early pleistocene floods uh, that were uh, initiated during that period of time 15 early pleistocene floods in six geographical provinces six in the pasco basin three in the cheney palouse two in the walla walla valleys two in the uh, Othello, one in the Quincy and one in the Columbia Gorge. And so we have evidence for these ancient cataclysmic floods all of the way through um, the, the, the Quaternary. We don't want to forget those. And so when we talk about uh, the Ice Age floods, remember the old ones that I've been talking about today, and then the, the 15 to 18 uh, a thousand year ones, uh, which are the ice age floods or or uh, what we also call the Missoula floods that we have got. In those areas, you have got a lot of soil development. You've got stages two, three, and four in the Caliche developments that you have got. Uh, and, and so it's very exciting. So Erica came up with 26 sites of middle Pleistocene, 11 early Pleistocene that you have got. And they're present everywhere except the Othello channels. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, and they, there are very few of them in the lowest valleys. These are generally at uh, mid range and higher elevations uh, that you have got. So in conclusions, uh, first of all, soil development, you had primarily stage one, two, three, and four, Caliche and all of these old paleosols showing that we have got flood deposits all of the way through the quaternary. Uh, and that is very, very important. And so the flood deposits go from stages one to three. Uh, Prominent calcium carbonate uh, paleosol uh, that you have found there. Um, and and they, these are generally related to the B horizons that you, you have got. Uh, and, and, and so we have lots and lots of flood deposits out there that are much, much older. And so when we talk, talk about the Ice Age floods, talk about them in general, focus in on the, the, current la the latest landforms, which are the Missoula floods, but don't forget the older ones, these ancient cataclysmic floods that we have got. And so in the future, what we're trying to do is find some more of these, more sites especially down the Columbia Gorge and into the Willamette Valley. And I think that we do have a couple places in the Willamette Valley right now. Uh, and then with this, we will be able to de further develop the soil development of these caliche layers. Alan Busaka, uh, Eric McDonald did a lot of the initial stages. And so hopefully with time, we will be able to go into these a lot more in depth. Uh, and again, we thank the Ice Age uh, National Geological Trail, which was established in 2001. Uh, and um, when we're talking about the Ice Age floods, remember to don't forget the ancient cataclysmic floods in addition to the Missoula floods uh, that we have got there.
So that's the story of the ancient cataclysmic floods. Eric, Me Erica Medley did a wonderful job of classifying and putting all of this together and characterizing this, building on the shoulders of a lot of the people before her, them, but also finding some new ones. So thank you very much, Dale, for the invitation to come and talk to you tonight. And if there's any time for questions, I would love to answer some of them. Yes, indeed.